friends, I'm here again. Well, we have talked about previously about the compositions of painting, space divisions of painting, textures, terminologies, and all this interesting part of painting. Today, we are going to have another interesting part of painting. That is man-made object related to painting. How it has been I mean, transfer to painting. Let us uh, start with a uh, painting that has already been done from man-made object and how it has been depicted on canvas. Well, when man-made object is being transformed into canvas, I mean, if we transfer a man-made object into the canvas, uh, it creates something different uh, essence rather. Rather, I should say this particular word essence because painting sometimes reflects the essence of that particular object. This is the uh, um, topic that we will discuss today regarding man-made object related to painting, how it has been, it could have been transferred into canvas with different uh, medium. As we have talked about before, the textures, the compositions, the space divisions, so and so. So these are the things which will be uh, rather uh, composed together when we will transfer a man-made object. For an example, see this is a pot, a beautiful one with a beautiful shape, curved lines and straight lines, both of them are there. So how it has been transferred into a canvas? Let's see how it has been transferred into a canvas. This is the pot and see this is the pot once again on the canvas. It is very interesting my friend actually when we are uh, transferring the three dimensional object onto a two dimensional base it is very interesting. Let's see how it has been transformed. See this particular pot exactly has been put on the canvas the space division that we have talked about it has been placed in the right hand side giving a good space of breathing over the left hand side of the canvas now to make the composition right we have added a palette or a plate whatever it can be uh, behind this particular pot this particular pot is the main object of this particular painting now see this particular pot and again this particular uh, other rather it is made out of uh, mud rather uh, terracotta we would say terracotta is it's totally out of, uh, of Bengal's art it has been uh, depicted on this particular canvas just see how this two uh, man-made object which has been done by the human being has been transformed into a canvas let us talk about this particular thing a little bit more so here this particular pot as we have seen it on my hand and here this particular plate as we have seen it before these particular two things have been placed on this particular canvas in such a way so that the whole thing has become a beautiful painting see the draperies has been placed before be I rather behind this particular objects so that that could make a beautiful space divisions on the particular canvas and with that particular thing as we have this uh, uh, talked about before in uh, other other sessions about the colors and textures this particular uh, background rather the draperies and all with this particular colors has uh, rather helped this particular painting to be become a live one now as we have talked before about the perspective and everything here we see just on this particular pot the pot and the pallet both are being placed on a flat uh, uh, canvas but at the same time you can see properly if you see straight away on this particular canvas it can be easily seen that this pot is in front of the plate and the draperie is behind the plate 
So perspective here also playing a vital role. And due to this particular perspective, this particular canvas, this particular painting has become a beautiful one. As I have said, it is very interesting to transform any man-made object to a canvas because it is not only transforming a particular man-made object to a canvas but it is a challenge for an artist to depict that particular thing on the canvas as live as it is uh, in, in, in the, the three-dimensional form. So whenever we are transforming any uh, sort of man-made object it can be a flowers, it can be a glass itself, it can be even a, 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 um, a pot as we have seen, it can be a round uh, um, palette, anything, whatever it can be, even it can be this particular pencil. If we transfer it into the canvas in form of drawing or in form of painting, it is itself a challenge and always artists uh, get pleasure to do it because when we can see the man-made object which is realistic one, which, which you can hold in the hand, has been transformed into the canvas and is looking as if it is alive, as if it can be taken out from the canvas and can be held by the hand. It has become uh, almost as real as the real one. The artist himself feels, it, uh, feels a very, uh, uh, um, I mean, satisfied. The viewers also get fascinated when they see the original object, man-made object, is being transformed into the canvas as real as it is when we are holding it on. So this is the magic of painting. Magic of painting is like that. When we are transforming a man-made object to the canvas and it is looking like as if it has been a real one which has just been placed onto the canvas itself. So here comes the magic of the painters who are doing this particular type of painting. This is also called still life painting. So friends, I think we have been clear enough about the man-made object and the painting. I mean the relation between the man-made object and the painting. That means transferring the man-made object in form of painting. Now we will talk about the natural object and the painting. That means again, the bonding between the natural object and the painting, transforming natural object into a form of painting. Let us look at this particular painting. This particular painting is of a flower. As you can see, the flower is there with all its petals. It is a sublime one, rather we would say a gorgeous one with beautiful uh, petals, with beautiful leaves over there and as we have talked about texture in other, other uh, part of our uh, program. These particular textures have added the, a little bit of uh, sublimity in this particular painting. The natural object has been transformed into the canvas but at the same time, the artist who has done it has put the textures, the perspectives, the space divisions, everything as it should be in a particular painting. This is very important while we are doing a painting of a natural object as well as of a man-made object as we have uh, talked about before regarding the man-made object. Again here, the natural object plays the same role when we are doing it as a painting. For this particular flower, when the painter is depicting this particular flower, rather putting this particular flower onto the canvas as it is in light form, he or she actually not only copying the painting but adding something more with a uh, Mm, uh, as far as perspective, as far as space divisions are concerned, as far as, as we have talked about the textures are concerned, to make the whole thing alive, to make the whole thing a very gorgeous one. Well friends, I hope you are enjoying it as I am enjoying to describing it because painting is all of enjoyment. Here again in front of us 
a natural object which has been transformed into a form of painting. See, here there is a log of a, of a tree, here is a, a house, the, the, uh, the trees behind and a greeneries, I mean the whole thing can be depicted, can be uh, rather described as a landscape. This particular painting, as we can see, natural object as well as man-made object, both of them has been mingled up. This particular uh, part of the tree, it is a natural object. The trees behind, they are all natural object. But these houses, I mean, this particular houses one, two or three, they are man-made object. So man-made object as well as natural object, when they have been mingled up to be, uh, I mean, as a whole, with space divisions, with textures, with colors, as we have uh, talked about before, it can be a beautiful painting as it has become. So, man-made object and natural object both can be mingled together. At the same time, as we have seen before, the particular flower it is totally a natural object. So, when whatever it may be, a realistic. A uh, natural object, a realistic man-made object, a realistic natural object, natural object plus man-made object. Anything can be transformed into a form of painting if it can be properly placed, if it can be properly balanced, if it can be properly uh, depicted on the canvas. I think you are all clear enough about this particular form of natural object and painting, uh, man-made object and painting, relation between rather. I would always say relation between because whenever we will do some painting, we will have to have a relation between the natural object or the man-made object as the topic of our day today. Let us do something live. Let's see what comes up. Well, then let us do something live so that we can have a clear uh, uh, ideas about what I have said before. See, this is a space, a white one, where I am going to make the, as I have said before, the relation between man-made object and natural object together, mingled up on a particular space of uh, canvas or a piece of paper with, of course, the space divisions, thinking in our mind, putting in our mind, and the perspective. Let's start. See, the natural object of a tree is coming out gradually. This is of course very, I mean, uh, for the beginners, those who are interested about doing the natural object on the canvas, it will gradually 
the part of this particular uh, textures and then everything will come later on. But for the beginners, it is nice one. Let's see how it is coming. textures of the tree, little bit as we see on the natural form. So, this is a natural object, see a tree, of course without any leaves, but sometimes trees can be without any leaves. So here the tree without any leaves, a natural object which has been transformed into this particular paper. Now with pencils of course without using brush. Now see little bit of mountains behind. Here comes again as I have rather talked about perspective. See this particular tree is in front of this particular mountain. So I am putting little bit of textures as we have talked about textures. I hope you are remembering that particular episode about texture. Here again the texture is playing a very vital role. See how this particular texture is taking out this particular plant, is taking out this particular tree rather, in front of this particular part of a mountain. But it's coming out gradually. Very slowly, the whole thing is coming out. Now, again, as I have talked about the man-made object can be I mean mingled up with the natural object. Here is a man-made object, a house, a hut rather. As I have uh, talked about in our previous session regarding uh, texture. Now see how the texture is playing an important role in this particular natural object. A tree it has got its texture. Those who are looking at it with uh, total interest, they can find this particular texture on the tree which is actually making it as much alive as it can be in very short period of time. Now more or less the whole thing has been done. Now let us point out one by one. This is the natural object, a tree. This is a hut, man-made object. This is rather a mountain. I don't call it a mountain, rather a little bit of hilly, hilly path behind the tree as well as behind the hut. These are the grasses, man-made object. So again, as I have said before, 
mingling up of man-made object as well as natural object is there. And in our previous session, as I have talked about, the space divisions, the division of uh, the particular positions of the objects. Here again, we can see this particular part of this particular painting is being covered up with different objects. And here, this particular space is void. So this is the breathing space, as we have talked about in our earlier session. So as a whole, natural object as well as man-made object together can create a beautiful painting. Those were uh, looking at this, uh, rather uh, uh, seeing this uh, particular sessions uh, one by one, they must be uh, getting interest and I would ask them to do something on their own, by their own, by looking at the natural objects as well as by looking at the man-made object, same together. That would be that would help them to continue with uh, this particular sessions uh, to uh, carry on with their terms of, uh, as far as terms of paintings are concerned. We will have other parts of paintings, different forms of paintings, different, uh, uh, mm, rather, what shall I say, different techniques of paintings that will come later on. But up till now, what we have talked about, if those who are very much interested about painting, if they can practice in their own by their own by looking at the natural object by thinking about the space divisions by thinking about the textures by thinking about the colors as well as by taking the whole thing very seriously i hope they will be very much benefited